during the first six months of me moving to Germany, I had a very challenging time mentally because I saw how German parents treated their kids and it shattered my whole reality. All the time I thought that the way my parents treated me was universal and that is how parenting works. And when I go to Germany and I see parents have so much love and compassion and like respect to their little babies, it made me question if my parents was treating me nicely. <laughs> Spoiler alert, to German standard, no. But to Vietnamese standard, I think they did their best already. <laughs> it took me a while to process everything, but now I'm at peace and me and my parents are in good term. So today I can happily sit down and tell you guys how it is growing up in Vietnam with Vietnamese parents compared to German boyfriend who is growing up in Germany with German parents. Um, he's supposed to be the one who tell you guys that, but he's busy. So he gave me uh, his permission to talk about my observation and he's gonna fact check it later. Before I start my story, I just want to ask you guys to listen to it with some empathy toward my parents because some of what they did might sound questionable, but it's because they were poor and not very educated. And especially when they were growing up, they were not getting treated with a lot of love and kindness. So it's hard for them to express it the right way with us. But deep inside, I know that they love me so much and they have done everything they could so that I can have a better life. So I was born in 1995. That year, the village finally had electricity. Before that, we were still using candle. My mom is a farmer and she has a tiny land where she plant rice, peanut, corn and bean. And it's all by hand because there is no technology at that time. My father worked a 9 to 5 job and I believe at that time he was earning 10 euros per month. My family is very traditional, which means although both my mom and my father worked and they made kind of the same money, my mom still have the solely responsibility of taking care of the house, cooking, cleaning and take care of children. My father doesn't need to do anything actually. <laughs> because of that, my mom was raising four kids by herself while maintaining all of the tasks and it made her severely stressed out and obviously she lashed out to us from time to time. When I was a child, I even preferred my father more because of that. He was so chill. He never like yelled at me. He just there to like sometimes give me some pocket money. Whereas my mom is always telling me I was doing something wrong. I have to fix this and that. I have to do this and that. And she is super uptight. But now that I grow up and I look back, um, I have different opinion. <laughs> Although my father was distant, I appreciate that at least he's not controlling because if you're being a man, a father in a Vietnamese family, you have a lot of power. You can like literally controlling like everybody and tell people what to do and we have to do it because father said so or like the husband say so. But at least my father was not abusing that power and he just let us be us and he let my mom being a very fierce and scary woman. And I appreciate that. <laughs> In Germany, the roles are way more balanced. German boyfriend's father worked and his mom stayed at home to take care of the children, but still his father uh, was still involving into raising the child and like, I saw him hugging them. I saw him saying sorry and I saw him saying something like, I'm sad because you did that. And it was one of the very big culture shock because I did not know that a father can have such a range of emotion. <laughs> Growing up, I didn't have any hobby because we cannot afford anything. I also didn't have any toy except one Pokemon plushie my grandma bought for me. Um, also, they didn't really let me go out that often or even having friends. And that part made me really angry when I was a child. Every time when I bring a friend over, they weren't very welcoming and they always to tell my friends to go home after like, 30 minutes. My parents somehow decided that it is way more important for me as a child that I am studying well so that I would have a better life in the future. The other part that I finally understand when I was older is that my village is not that safe for a child to walk around. Because my parents was very busy, they cannot really be with me all the time, they just decided to just lock me in the house to protect me from all of the bad influence. Still, that decision turned me into a very socially awkward teenager and somehow they were mad at me that I was not sociable enough. But at the same time, I guess the positive thing is that some of my creativity comes from the time when I was just locked inside the house and basically imagined objects as people and came up with story to kill time. 
for years. I don't think German boyfriend had the same experience like mine. I saw his album picture. He had a lot of fun. He was in the zoo with his friends. He was in the scout. They do like camping. They were on school trip. His parents was encouraging him to be sociable, to have friends and everything. And uh, they have more time for him. So I understand. Still, I'm jealous. <laughs> In Vietnam, we have a saying that if you love someone, you have to beat them. And if you hate someone, you show them love and compassion. And many Vietnamese, especially villagers, took it into heart. Um, actually, I'm pretty grateful that I wasn't get beaten that often. But many of my friends were getting beaten daily or weekly because of minor mistake like dropping a cup or like forgetting something or having bad grades and they don't just like give you a smack or something normally they would use like giant twig and then they make you lie down to like beat you properly it's super painful if you're a girl they would humiliate you by shave your head or like cut your hair in an ugly way so that when you go to school you would be like embarrassed nobody thought that it was a problem at the time they all say that it's good for the kid because they get disciplined and they will not do the bad things again it was so far from the truth. Many of my friends who were beaten daily, horribly, they didn't turn out that great. They have a lot of mental issue and they didn't like having their life together. So yeah, seriously, do not beat your kid. It's not solving anything. My parents has to be the only couple in the village that barely beat their children. Whenever my mom was mad at me, she just yelled at me a lot. And sometimes I wish that she would just whoop me because uh, some of what she said when she was angry was very hurtful and traumatizing. It took a lot of like self-healing for me to get over it and forgive her. In Germany, you are not allowed to beat your kid at all. If someone figured that out, they could take the kid away and punish the parents. They deserve that. The thing is, I don't think German boyfriend parents didn't beat him because it was illegal. It's just because they decided to teach him with a lot of kindness. Like, they just talked to him. They gave him time out, they gave him toys and everything. And uh, it turned out great. So I don't understand why you have to go the extreme to like punish your kids physically. When I was a teenager, my mom was very strict about my look because she thinks that if a teenager has makeup or color hair or even like care about how she look a little bit, she's boy and she's gonna turn to be a bad person in the future. So uh, she always make me to wear something super modest. I'm not allowed to like paint my nail or like do anything with my hair or like having any lipstick or makeup on. So like nothing at all. I still remember one time I wanted to be pretty so I go to the hair salon and ask for a seal press so that it's like straighter because I didn't like my like frizzy hair and when I was home she was so mad at me so she started throwing like a broom at me <laughs> she didn't talk to me for like days after that when I go to the university she gets a bit more relaxed she allows me to have like a uh, color hair and everything but tattoo is a no-go. Even now, no-go. Like if you have a tattoo, you're done. It's so crazy because I knew a friend who has a tiny tattoo right here, just like one centimeters. And when she met her in-laws for the first time, the in-law said either you delete the tattoo or you cannot marry my son. And she delete the tattoo. So yeah, <laughs> it is that taboo and it is that crazy in Vietnam. Even at school, they ban everything so that uh, the kids can focus on studying. And when everybody look the same, we would feel like we are in one community and one group instead of like one individual person. And I don't think that is good at all. And it, it's not just like physical look. It's also like the way we behave. We always have to behave in one certain way and there is no exception. And I was feeling pretty trapped because I feel like there are more out there and there are more inside me that I could be and I was not allowed to be. I don't know if I describe it uh, in a correct term, but I think you guess what I mean. My parents didn't really listen to my opinion up until I was like 24. They didn't really think that I have my own thought or something. They just think that all they need to do is feed me, whip me some clothes and raise me through school and basically that's it. German boyfriend parents listened to him even when he was a child. They respect his opinion and they treat him like a human being with opinion and see what they did. He grew up to be fairly confident. He doesn't afraid to speak his mind. I grew up 
to be a very, very reverse person. I didn't dare to say whatever I thought in my mind because I'm so afraid of whatever people think about me and I'm so afraid of upsetting people. I'm very glad that I moved to Germany and I started to be more direct. But I just wish to have like <laughs> the confidence that German boyfriend have. In my family, we don't hug each other or we don't say I love you to each other. It is a very weird thing for like Vietnamese family to say. We don't even like touch each other at all. Um, so it's a bit difficult to feel the love of a parent for the kid. But I still remember when it's nightfall and we sleep together, my mom would hug me very tight and she would start saying like, oh, my lovely daughter, you're so cute. But she had to make sure that I'm sleeping already. And sometimes I just pretend to sleep so that I can hear that. I don't think my parents praise me often if I do something right, but they make sure to let me know whenever I make a mistake and they will not let me forget it for a while. This is really bad because it wired in my brain that this is how you should treat like your loved one. If they do something good, you don't say anything, but if they do one thing bad, you make sure to like let them know. And uh, for a while, when I first dating German boyfriend, I was kind of doing that and uh, took a while, like German boyfriend have to like show me a lot to make me realize that that is not how you should treat your loved one. I'm proud to say that I have changed a lot and now I can just like say a lot of lovely thingy to the family. The thing is everybody want to be treated that way. It's just that we didn't have that kind of treatment before, so we don't know how to do that properly. <laughs> when I was living with my parents, they only expect two things from me. I have to study very well and I have to be respectful toward older people. That's it. I don't need to do anything else, even cooking or cleaning, as long as I can do those two things well. But if I cannot do one of those two things, I am in for a treat. Like if I have bad marks at school, life over. My mom's gonna yell at me for days, for weeks. The thing is, I was doing pretty well at school up until grade nine. I was always the best student in class. After grade nine, things get too hard and complicated. I was not doing that well anymore, which means my mom was very, very angry at me all the time. But uh, studying in Vietnam is a big topic for another story. Respecting elderly could go into a very extreme way in Vietnamese village. Like whenever you see someone older, you have to like, hello, hello auntie, hello sister, immediately make sure to address them correctly and make sure to like show them their respect. If someone come to my house and I forgot to like immediately say hi to them in the most respectful way, they would be very mad at my parents and they would tell my parents that like I'm uneducated, I'm a failure and everything. So um, that's something I have to remember. From German boyfriend, I really like that his parents prioritize that he should be a good person. They show him how to be kind to people, they tell him how to help people and be respectful toward nature and things like that. Things like studying or like respectful towards elderly. I don't think it even like exists in Germany. You should respect anyone, not just the elderly. They don't really like force him to like studying that much like what my parents did. When I was growing up, mental health was something that nobody around me aware of. So obviously my parents had no clue about it too. There is only two types of mental health. Either you are normal or you are completely crazy and had to be sent to an asylum. There is no in between. Anytime someone cannot deal with it anymore and have like a mental breakdown, we think that they was possessed by a ghost and instead of bringing them to a hospital, we would like throw them like ceremony so that some of the witch can talk to the ghost so that the ghosts can start processing them. My cousin who was the same age with me went through that and instead of like bringing her to the hospital, they do that ceremony and they pay a lot of money for that. And luckily somehow she gets better, but some of them never gone better. Dating is a no-no for my parents. We were not allowed to date, we were not allowed to have any friends who were boys. And if we bring a bunch of friends home and there were boys in the group, my father would ask him to get out of his house. That strict. So their approach is like completely block me out of any potential boyfriend. And also I wasn't given any of the grown-up talk 
at all. The lack of knowledge about sex education in our village was very alarming. Many of my friends when we were like 17, 18 still think that we were giving birth through the armpit. We didn't know how it worked. We didn't know how to protect ourselves. All we know is that sex is bad and if we lose our virginity before getting married, we bring shame to the whole family. I understand that it's difficult and uncomfortable for my parents to talk about it, but at least tell me that there are creeps out there and I should protect myself. One thing about our culture that I'm pretty confused is that we don't really celebrate life, but we celebrate death a lot. My parents don't really remember my birthday because we don't celebrate my birthday. But guess what they're celebrating very hard for? It's the dead day of our ancestor and family members. Every year on the day that person died, the whole family and extended family would come together could be like even 50 people, we would like eat together and things about that person. I mean, it's tradition and I don't want them to stop doing that. I think it's a very nice tradition. I just don't understand why don't they just use a bit of their resources to have a birthday party for the live person as well. Like I would love to have a birthday party when I'm still alive instead of like people celebrating me after I'm gone already. In Germany, the death day is not that important, I think. I mean, they would still remember that day and they would talk about that person on that day, but basically that's it. But the birthday is a big thing. Everybody is gathering together, they give each other gifts, they're celebrating their lives and they have fun together. And I really, really like that tradition. My parents didn't say it out loud that they love me, but they show it with the action and I can see it. For example, we didn't really have much money to buy like good food to eat or meat. So whenever my mom bought a fish, for example, she would let me eat the meat part of the fish and she would just eat the head. Even a chicken, she only eat the bony part, like the leg or like the head or the neck. And if I tell her to eat like the, the thigh or something, she would be like, I don't like it. I just like the bony part. No, she didn't. She just don't want to eat it because she want me to eat the good part. She doesn't even have time for herself and she doesn't want time for herself. She just want to use all of her time to taking care of her children, saving money. If there's anything they could do to improve my education, they would do it. If I need money to like having extra classes, they would figure it out how to get money to put me there. Sometimes I just wish that my mom would think about herself a bit more, just like putting herself first for once instead of putting her kids and her husband first because it's painful to see sometimes like when she refused to eat good food she refused to go traveling if she just say no for a while and just like focus on herself to enjoy her life i think that would make all of us happy but it's difficult for her to do that because nobody ever showed her to put herself first you know, the funny thing is my mom was so strict and sometimes frustrated with me up until I was 18 years old, which means when I was still living with them. The moment I moved out of the house to go to the big city to uh, be in a university, she turned to a completely different person. She became a very chill mom, a loving mom. She called me and asked me, what am I eating? Whenever I go home, she just like cook a lot of food for me. It's a completely 180 degree change. And I think I know the reason. In her mind, she thinks that her job is like raising me until I was 18 so that I can get into a good university. The moment I get into a university, she's kind of done. Now it's the society who has to teach me and she believed that I have all of the good quality that she teach me already so now I can like being a grown-up. But the funny thing is she was so strict with me and she was like putting me into like this bubble, I didn't learn anything much about like a grown up with her. So when she sent me to the university in a big city, I had to learn everything again. I was like a baby <laughs> learning to be a grown up in a very, very quick time, but it was okay. I'm not complaining. I was by myself. I met friends. I learned things. I fail. I cry. I grown up. And the best thing is that my mom became a chill mom now. So she's there to support me instead of like yelling at me. So that's great. The thing is, looking back, I know that some of what my parents did to me were not very nice and they could have done better. If I have a child, I would not treat my kid the same way for sure. But at the same time, I'm not sure if I have 
that much love and patience and sacrifice the way my mom did, giving her circumstances at that time to raise us with that much love and compassion that she didn't show to our face, but she had it in her heart. I mean, German boyfriend and parents were not rich at all, but they had the help of the society, and also they were not that poor to the boy, they don't have enough food to eat. So I kind of think that he definitely has a better childhood than me, a little bit more chill and everything. So yeah, that's my story. Thank you very much for listening. Please be kind on the comment section. And then I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.